Here we are in a three bed semi detached house and our homeowner is suffering from noise from neighbours. They're hearing TV, conversation, all the usual noises from that separating party wall. So I'm just going to go through our four step soundproofing method to show you how we're going to soundproof this room. The first thing is the main cause. We have to address the main cause of the problem before we do any soundproofing. And this particular room has a couple of main causes. The first main cause is this that plasterboard. Okay, so it's hollow that plasterboard on all of the surfaces here. You see this is, this is plasterboard and it's fixed to the wall with drywall adhesive, creating a hollow board. So how do you know if you have dot and dab plasterboard? Well, here's a hollow, and there's a solid, hollow, solid, hollow, and that's a good way if you can tell whether you have dot and dab plasterboard on your walls, is to tap on the walls. So that's the first main cause. The second main cause is the suspended floor void. Here we have a huge void going down into the floor, and that's why you might have the vents, vents outside the property to allow the air to flow through and may allow that suspended floor void to breathe. So if you want to check whether you have a suspended floor void or not, maybe check out the front of the property. If you have vents, ventilation, that's a good sign that you would have a suspended floor void. With this particular project, the joists are running parallel to the party walls. Here the floorboards are running into the separating party wall and the joists are running parallel. So that means, uh, that's really good actually because the, the homeowner is less likely to suffer from impact noise such as doors banging, footfall, kids running around. Because the joists are running parallel, there's not much structural ball noises coming through the floor. What we're going to do when we get to the direct noise path, which I'll show you in a minute, is move those joists over. I'll come back to that in a second. Step number two in the four step soundproofing method is the direct noise path. And this is what everybody's trying to sell you, is a solution to the party wall. To soundproof the alcove, the chimney stack, the fire back, and the other alcove as well. This area here. That's what we call the direct noise path. But it's not just this area to the floor, to the ceiling. It's that area beneath the floor void and above the ceiling. That is still the direct noise path. We're going to install our trademark floating frame to the alcoves, which is 175 mil thick. We're going to install our 50 mil system to the chimney stack. The fire back is going to have, again, another little floating frame, 175 mil thick to that area to the back of the fire. And again, to this alcove, we'll have another 175 mil to this alcove here. Now moving on to the indirect noise pass, and that's areas where the noise can come around and noise can come over and under. We call them flanking areas. And for this project, it has a lot of flanking areas. The first area is this window wall. We have dog down, but we have noise flanking down that window wall. But one thing the homeowner did is, on the phone call, it said, do you hear the noise on the window wall? And what they did is they put their ear, finger in the ear, put the other ear, against the flanking wall to listen, to see, or to try and feel what they could hear down that flanking wall. And you could clearly hear the TV here, but also the other side of the window, they heard the noise there as well. So if you have uh, a window wall and you're suffering from the TV noise, maybe do that little ear on the wall test. Another indirect noise path, part of this bay window, is we potentially have an RSJ, a roll steel joist here, in the ceiling somewhere, we need to open that up and potentially expose the RSJ, sound deaden and insulate that RSJ to reduce the noise from the structure transmitting all the way over and up to other rooms above. Another indirect noise path will be this wall here, which is the separating wall between this lounge and the kitchen. And again, this is hollow and we need to sound deaden this wall because there's noise flanking down this wall. This is an area where the homeowner likes to have a seat and this wall is potentially one of the walls closest to their ear, which is closest to their ear, which is why we need to sound in that wall. And another indirect noise path would be the ceiling, to go over the entire ceiling with a heavy duty sound block board, which will reflect our homeowner's noise back into the room, give them some privacy, but also stop that noise coming over. Now there's one more indirect noise path, and that is in the bedroom above. That bedroom wall above, that is also dot and dab plasterboard. So when the 
uh, the neighbors are making noise in that bedroom diagonally above, diagonally above that way. That noise is coming over and then coming down into this room diagonally above. So we need to treat that room in the bedroom above as well. Now moving on to the fixtures and fittings, step number four in the four step soundproofing method. Here we're gonna do the electrical, we're gonna extend all the wires out to fit the new wall system. We're gonna put new skirting, new architrave around the door on that wall. We're gonna remove the coving because the coving has a hollow void around it and the noise is just channeling around the room. We're also going to put a floating shelf unit in here and some little area here to put the TV on. You can put whatever you want on a soundproof wall. You just got to put the technology in the wall to support whatever you're putting onto the wall. Or you've just got to take into consideration the fixtures and fittings in the design phase. So when you're doing, when you're actually building your soundproof wall, take that in, take those fixtures and fittings into consideration now. Uh, and then you can put whatever you want on your new soundproof wall. The finished floor will be carpet, and we're gonna put a new window sill on this window wall here to take into consideration the 25 mil space loss that we'll have from the 50 mil system that we installed to this wall. Because it's dotted that plasterboard, there's potentially 25 mil we're gonna remove from this wall. The thickness of the wall system is 50 mil, therefore there'll be a 25 mil space loss on this window wall. So that's how we're gonna follow the four step soundproofing method for this room. So we're gonna go ahead and soundproof this room over the next four to five weeks. We're gonna completely finish this room, doing all the painting and decorating, refitting carpet, the shelving, everything. And we're gonna film the whole thing. So if there's anything you want me to show you in the next video, uh, let us know in the comments down below and I'll be sure to include that in the next video, part two, I should say. Just a little teaser of what you're in for, for part two. But look what we have here. A rather large hole goes all the way through to next door. I could lose that broom up there if I wanted to, but we need that to tidy up. The guys actually removed the bay window ceiling uh, this morning, and this is what we found. A huge hole going through to next door. You can actually see the neighbours uh, plasterboard. You can see the neighbours' lounge ceiling plasterboard through this hole. You can get your arm through to that next door. So just imagine how much noise that hole in the structure is letting in. And we often find holes like that around bay windows uh, and holes in the structure on a lot of properties we attend. Not just old properties, but the new builds as well. We're gonna show you how we go about bricking that hole up and soundproofing this whole room in part two. Anything you want me to share, let us know in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell if you wanna be notified when that next video uh, is published in about four to five weeks time. And I'll see you on the next video.